Hey, what's up? It's Chanel. Welcome to a new episode of Vital Vinyl Vlog. Today, we're going to be grinding your head in with Finland's Sonic Poison Combat Grind cassette on Caligari Records and 7-inch on MSUO. They put out a killer split earlier this year with Axe Slaughter also on MSUO. Killer fucking stuff right here if you have not heard this or if you've never heard Harsh Demonstration. Oh my god, Harsh Demonstration and Combat Grind. Uh, I can't wait for Sonic Poison to put out a full length record and hopefully finally get all those grind maniacs across the world to hear how good Sonic Poison are because they're one of those bands I rarely hear anyone talk about and it's like they're one of the best bands currently playing grind and I never hear them mentioned outside of when they have a new release or something so if you're a fan of grindcore check out Finland's Sonic Poison Harsh Demonstration, Combat Grind, they have a couple sick fucking splits. They're one of those bands I feel can do no wrong. This is so goddamn good. MSUO and Caligari Records. Fuck yeah. Definitely check these guys out. I, I really love Sonic Poison. And this next band, one of my favorite grind bands of all time, although... This is one of my least favorite records of theirs, but it's still better than like 97% of other grindcore records. My only problem here is the production. And I don't know if it was like remastered, but I remember this sounding a lot dirtier and a lot more along the lines of inhale, exhale, as I'm talking about Nozum Helvet 2003 on Relapse Records Rest in peace Mazuko Fucking if you saw my video on Inhale Exhale if you don't know the backstory to Mazuko's death Fucking 2004 tsunami just a total tragedy and Nalzum went on to do Grind Finale, and I don't know what Doombringer was. I don't know if it was a record with the vocalist from Rotten Sound on it. I honestly don't know off the top of my head, so I apologize. But if this is remastered, then it goes along with a string of other relapsed Grind records that never should have been fucked with production-wise, and one of those records is one of my favorite grind records ever, and now I don't know how I'm going to get a copy of the original mix on vinyl, except for, I think, that they might have done a picture disc when this release originally dropped, and I'm talking about Pig Destroyers, Prower in the Yard. I hate, 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 hate that remastered version of that record. I don't know what, it, it just took like all the heart and soul out of it. And it's funny, if you read the Decibel Hall of Fame article, like if you actually have the magazine, there's a quote from Scott Hull saying, I would not change a thing about this record. And then on the next page, there's a fucking relapse ad advertising the remastered and reissued version of Prower in the Yard. And it's like, wait, why would you make this digital when it was like super fucking grimy and one of the darkest grind records ever when it comes to lyrical content? Just that overall sound and everything. But I feel like they made it sterile when they did the remix or remaster I don't know what they did with it but it just is one of those records that 
it needed to just be left alone. It should have never been fucked with. But it is what it is. But one of my favorite things about Nalzum's Helvet is the fact that they have a lot of guest musicians on here. And it makes it just very interesting. And you get like Shane Embry from Napalm Death doing bass on Drop Dead and Whip. Jorgen Sandstrom with some additional low vocals. Ricard Arakson with some additional low vocals. And Katar Fred Freed with some additional guitars on Just Another Hog. And this is 22 tracks of Grinding Madness. Matthew Jacobson produced, the, pr produced this bad boy and... You know, like I was saying, in 2003, like, when I first heard this, it was, like, game-changing, you know? It was another Nalsum record, but this was my senior year in high school. My first real, actual job was at the Relapse Warehouse, when it used to be located in Upper Darby. And I fucked my ankle up the first week working there to where I was like on crutches and you know you can't work in a warehouse when you're on crutches and I ended up still being able to help a friend of mine we would work shows so we would get a certain amount of distro items and whatnot set up a merchandise table and I pretty much got paid in records and weed so it was fine with me honestly but uh you know and I also got into the shows for free because I, I was technically working but Nalsum was one of those bands that really got me you know to go down the grindcore rabbit hole and along with Albert's Choosing Death book that lit such a massive fire under my ass when I read it that I joined a band and we ended up, you know, getting signed and doing all that fun stuff and even getting to share the stage with Napalm Death, who I was in line to see when I got the phone call asking, hey, do you want to do vocals for this band we're doing, which ended up being Skeleton Proof Tanks. And sadly, on the Metal Encyclopedia page for A Cursed Womb, it says, you know, my name and X skeleton proof tanks it's like fuck god damn it but it is what it is some people liked SPT it was fun but you know I wanted to play more straightforward death metal during that time period and we still had that like melodic edge to it that we were really trying to distance ourselves from but whatever I'm here to talk about fucking Nalsum and Helvet, which means hell. But these Swedes right here, although four, although all four Nalsum albums have individual values for me, I usually answer Helvet when someone asks me which one is my favorite. And this is from Anders. That's actually very surprising. We might have found our sound on its predecessor, but on Helvet, we finally got the right production. I disagree. The production on here, I get it. It's during this time period. Yeah, it might have been exactly what the band wanted, especially from a songwriting standpoint. They wanted every instrument to be heard, and I get it. And Relapse during this time period was going through, you know, bands like Mastodon beginning to blow up. Bands like High on Fire beginning to blow up. And that started kind of pushing grind releases down a little bit until Pig Destroyer's Terrifier popped up and Nalsum dropped Shift. Shift was legit a game changer in my personal life. Helvet was, you know, a sick record and it was one of those slabs of grind where I always enjoyed throwing it on alongside Regurgitate Deviant. Like, whenever I would listen to Deviant, it just like, 
made me angry. I don't know why. Like, I just would put it on and be like, I fucking hate everyone. And I'm, I'm, I used to kind of be like that, but nowadays it's just like, whatever. Like, I just don't appreciate certain things, but normally it's just, it's whatever. Like, I'm fucking 35 years old. I, I don't need, you know, that shit in my life. But... I do need some killer grindcore in my life because it puts a smile on my fucking face. And with tracks like Violation, Scoop, Living Next Door to Malice, fucking Storm Shield. I, lo I love that song so much. Time to Discharge, Bullshit, Relics. Relics, such a fucking awesome song. Probably my favorite on, on here, honestly. We curse you all, Doombringer, just another hog, drop dead, side B, I hate people, go, the final sleep, slaves to the grind, breach of integrity, the everlasting shame, your words alone, preview of hell, what an awesome fucking title, a logic, whip, and worst case scenario. I like the kind of photoshopped artwork and whatnot. I just think it's fucking cool. I know it's not like the greatest cover, but it, it's just cool looking. Like, you know, compared to Shift and Inhale, Exhale, you know, it, it is what it is. Sh Shift is pretty straightforward as well. It's actually so straightforward that that's why I like it so much with the cover art. And... Inhale, exhale, it's just, it's classic. I mean, you can't, you can't go wrong with this. Like, this photo alone, I mean, come on. It's just got grindcore written fucking all over it. Even if you've never heard Nauseam and you look at this, it's like, oh, this is probably some crusty punk or some grindcore, like, without even knowing. But... Here with Helvet, like, you know, with the cover art, if I didn't know what this was, I still wouldn't know what this was when I flipped the back over. But it's definitely something fucking fast when you have 22 tracks on one LP. And Relapse, as always, they give a shit about reissues, and they always do very, very nice cosmetics. And this is no fucking different than um, Inhale, Exhale, which is another amazing reissue. But, like, look, what the fuck? That's crazy looking. And the B-side, I really dig as well. Just a sick fucking color. I don't even know what this color's called, but if you like LP cosmetics, like, this is one of my personal favorites in my collection. Thank you to Aaron for throwing these my way as part of a trade. Because this really, like, I don't even think he knew I liked Nalsum. I don't think I ever even mentioned it. But, like, these two Nalsum records just made that trade just taste even more delicious than it already was. Fuck yeah. But Helvet... 2003 slab of Relapse Grindcore during a time when Relapse was really kind of on top of things. And this record really goes to show, you know, the higher production quality that Grind was moving towards during this time period. And labels like Relapse, I think, had a lot to do with that, where bands in the underground were, like, the under-underground were still doing their thing and whatnot, but I feel like it wasn't until Insect Warfare, you know, came out of the depths of Texas to where that style of, like, early Lee Doran, Napalm Death grind made a massive comeback, and the Relapse error of grind kind of went away for records that are going to sell a little bit more and weird projects and awesome bands like nothing 
but, you know, Nothing is a band that, obviously, they're gonna sell records. They could win a Grammy if they really fucking wanted to. They're amazing songwriters, and when it comes to modern shoegaze or whatever they want to call that kind of dream pop sound that they have, Relapse have a massive winner on their hands with Nothing, just the way they did with Mastodon. Like, I remember when Leviathan came out, I had one of the promo CDs, which was 99 songs. So you couldn't put it on your computer and get it on iTunes because you had to listen to it continuously. Like, each song was, like, broken up in three seconds or something like that. I forget what it was. Not each song, but, like, it was, like, it would just go, like, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, all the way to 99. And it would be the entire album. And I just remember hearing Mastodon's Leviathan and being, like, whoa, like, what the fuck? And then... Dillinger Escape Plans, Miss, Miss, <laughs> Miss Machine came out around the same time period. And to me, 2004 was the year that Relapse Records became a major underground label. They definitely could have been, you can say a couple years before, you could say, hey, they were, you know, the best underground label from day one. But I feel like 2003 to 2005, that's Relapse Records in their second wind prime. Because when they did first come out, you know, the Relapse single series, all that badass legendary stuff from Incantation to Mortician, like to Exit 13, Brutal Truth. Like, when they signed Brutal Truth, it was like, oh yeah, like, fucking A. And when Brutal Truth did that little comeback and stuff, like, yeah. I know I mentioned Brutal Truth a lot in my last Nalsum video, and yeah, listen to Brutal Truth, Need to Control, Sounds of the Animal Kingdom. There's so much good shit out there when it comes to Relapse and Grindcore. Gadget and especially in Scandinavia and whatnot, but to me, Nausum, like I said in my inhale exhale video, they were one of those bands that just instantly stood out to me. And Helvet, when I first heard it, like I said, you know, this was something that really blew me the fuck away. And same with like Regurgitate, who will also hail from Sweden, and Deviant. They're definitely two different sides of the spectrum. Like, Deviant is a lot nastier and way more underground. I mean, listen to Carnivorous Erection and look at the cover art and you'll be like, oh, <laughs> that was on Relapse? What? <laughs> like, yeah, it's fucking gnarly. I used to have the t-shirt, too. But Nalsum, Helvet, especially if you're new to Grindcore, check this out. You're going to fucking love it. Like, especially if production and grind is turning you off a little bit, like, and you want to be able to hear every single instrument nice and crispy instead of covered in fuzzy bass and just, you know, vicious, raw-sounding blasting, then this is the type of record you really want to get into first. Nalsum Helvet on Relapse Records. This 2003 Slab of Grindcore, 22 tracks of a vicious Grindcore assault from Sweden. Killer stuff, and one of the last Nausum records to ever be written, sadly, due to the tsunami. R.I.P. to Mizuko. And, as always... Thanks for watching, you fucking rule. We were blasting Finland's Sonic Poison combat grind. They happened to grind our faces in a little bit early. But with tracks like Jesus Crust, you know you're getting into something awesome. I love this fucking release so much. But I love you all for watching this as well. As always, like I said, thanks for watching, you fucking rule. Hells. Yeah.